Right, did anyone see the video where I made my own network cable using these little things? Did you? If you didn't and you want to watch it, I will stick a link in the video description so you can go and check this out. This is a wall fascia and yeah, it was very easy to do. I was quite impressed how easy it was to make your own. So with that in mind, I've decided to do an upgrade. And I bought this from TP-Link. Yes, I bought it myself, they didn't send it to me. I actually just went out and bought it. So this is the Jetstream 24 port 2.5 Gigabase TL2 Plus Mini Switch with four 10GE SFP Plus slots. Now it's important that you get the one that says plus, or well, it is for me anyway, because my fiber is the S SFP Plus and not the SFP. Just in case you're you know, thinking, well, what's the difference? I believe the difference is one goes both ways and the other one doesn't, or something like that. I can't remember now. Now, this is not cheap and it's not for everyone. It's not really for just, say, for instance, your standard home. But because I do a lot of YouTube and stuff, I have, what, about four computers in just in this room. So there's about four computers on there. And I have a lot of cables and they're, they're getting messy. So with this, I've also ordered, which turned up today as well, a 24 port patch panel. It's in this box. Well, I hope it is anyway. We'll do the unboxing in a second. Let me explain. So the idea of the patch panel is to make all the cabling nice and nice and neat. So I am going to be doing maybe one or two, well, definitely more than one video because I'm going to be showing you how this all works or giving you the basic run around and setting it all up. I am going to try and connect it to the patch panel, if I can, with some wiring that I am going to be making myself and I am buying a cabinet. Now, I haven't actually ordered the cabinet yet, but I will be ordering it in a second. Once I finish part one of this video, or this bit of the video, I will be ordering that, and I will be building the actual cabinet. But the cabinet is not gonna go actually on the wall. It's actually gonna go on my shelving that I have behind this camera. Yes, yeah, so I've worked it out, I've had a measure up, and it will fit in there. Just need to move one of my computers over to one side a little bit. And it's all going to go in there and I want to run all the cables all into that and make it nice and tidy. Does that make sense? Yeah? So with that, before I do the unboxing of this, I'm going to do the unboxing of this first, just to make sure it's actually, actually the panel. Great big box and that's all that's in there. <laughs> Oh, by the way, this has been my first time ever in my life I've actually had a patch panel. I've never, ever used one. So, if it's the first time for you, it's the first time for me. Let me just quickly show you what she looks like. And I'll explain something else to you in a second. Move that out of the way. It's got the wiring instructions on there, and, you know, things like that. It's got an earth, as you can see, which is very handy because you do need an earth. Now, your network cables will go in the front, but the other wiring will go in the back. Now, there's two ways of doing this. I can figure out how to get it open. Right, there are two ways you can actually do this. One is you make your own cables and you terminate to this. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, believe it or not. It looks complicated, but... It isn't really, it isn't that complicated. It just looks a bit scary and you might be, oh, that looks too scary, but it's not. So you can either do it like that on the back, yeah, or you can have your own little connections like on these, where they're already done for you, and then you just plug them in. Let me give you an example. Say for instance, like the front, you want to plug in a cable. So that would go and say like that, job done, yeah. You can have the same connection on this side. Yeah, so your cable comes down from wherever it's coming from, or through the wall, wherever, and then plugs straight into there. Or, like I said, you can make your own. We are going to be making our own. Yeah, don't be scared. Don't be nervous. We're going to do it. It might not be in this video to start with, but we are going to be doing that. Move that cable out of the way. So that is your two options. And you get some cable ties with that as well. Very nice. Thank you very much. That was about £40. It's not that expensive. 
and they have five percent off as well. So yeah, we're well, just over forty pounds. Now onto the actual swish. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration or go through some of the features of this little baby. This wasn't meant to turn up until next week, but uh, it turned up a bit early, which is a uh, very nice. It's a bonus for back mounting for feet, I believe. Um, for communications, they still use them, do they? And the 24 pole network switch. Look at that baby. So we have 8, 16, 24, plus 4 fiber optics connections. Let's see if I can get one off and show you. There you go. So it just slides in there. They do produce quite a bit of heat actually. And console, so RJ45 console. So if you want to do it, you know, you put a tablet on here, connect it to it, or laptop, something like that. You plug it in there, and you can uh, actually just control it like that. Or you can actually do it on the internet. Let's see what's on the back. We have an earth, and we have power. Air vents on the side, a fan on that side. I'm not sure how noisy this is going to be, so it might be an issue. Hopefully she's not. So that's that. Little rubber feet, like I said earlier. Oh right, there's some little markings there for your rubber feet. Very handy, so they will go on there. And that will cushion it a bit. Nice bit of LED display there, giving you plenty of information. Console USB. Was that a mini USB? Yeah, very nice. Quite impressed so far. Well, it looks good anyway. There's your feet. There's your console controller. Should be a power brick in here, and yes it is. So we have, not power brick, it's a plug. So it's three pin plug, because this is for the UK market. And some big instructions. Installation guide, things like that. And I will be reading that and trying to set it all up. So that is it. So if this is something you are interested in and you want to see more on this, you need to let me know by subscribing, clicking on the bell to get notified. And, if you can, make a comment in the comment section. My first ever 24 port router with four fiber optic connections. So that runs at 2.5 and the four run at 10 gigabit. So it should be extremely fast and should be perfect for me or small business. So with that, give me a second while I read the instructions and see how easy it is to set up. Right, first thing first, it is plug and play. You can just basically power this up, plug in your connections, and away you go without doing anything on the actual insides of it or on the software side of it. If you want to just plug it in and away you go, job done. Very easy. It takes a few minutes for it to uh, initialize, but once it's initialized, it yeah, it's all there. It tells you what's going on, gives you a nice indication of what's going on with the lights. Very handy. I'm running fibre, so we're at 10 gigabit at the moment. Flat out, if you like. And I can hear the fan. You might hear the fan, you might not. But I can definitely hear the fan. It's not too loud, but you definitely can hear it. Now, something I did have an issue with, I couldn't get onto the web browser part. You know, I typed in 192.168.0.1 and because my router, my modem router, is on that IP address, it wouldn't connect, it kicked going to that one. So what I had to do in the end was connect this to one of my switches so that it's got internet access and going through my router, and then my router gave it a new IP address, and uh, yeah, it worked, I'm on now, hallelujah. I also downloaded some of their software, the Amada software, and I installed that as well. Nothing to do with getting onto the web browser part, but if you want to go into a bit more detail, you know, get more technical with it, you can by going in and using their 
part of their software, which I'm not going to do. I've had a look, and it does look quite complicated, and I'm not a network engineer by any means. I'm just, you know, just like you and me, I'm just a normal person that wants to learn things like this. But, so far so good. Oh yeah, I changed my shirt because it took me, took me a day to sort it out, and I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? Just can't figure it out, and that's what it was. So you need to play into either straight into your modem or into a, another switch so it connects to your modem and then your modem will sort out the actual IP address. Job done. Now, if you're going to go into this, it is very easy to do. It is admin and the password is admin and it will ask you to change the password. Change your password. There you go, look. See? So you need to give it a new password, because it's no good like that. Okay, so we will change it. I'm going to do that bit off the line now, and we're in. Now, I don't know what I'm actually looking at. I can see what these are. These are obviously the connections, so that is my fibre optics. So I'm in number 25 at the moment, and like it says up there, 10 gigabit SFP. Don't forget, we are doing SFP+. Plus. Now, something else I didn't tell you about, these connections, or the standard connections, these babies over here, they are PoE, power over Ethernet. So if you've got a camera that needs powering up through your networking, perfect. Which I do have actually. Yes, my cameras are powered by PoE. Power over Ethernet. Job done. So yeah, there's a lot to learn. I'm not doing a tutorial, but I just want to give you a basic overview of how easy or in my case, how hard it was to set up. Now, if you're interested in my data cabinet, it is on its way. It actually turned up the other day, actually, and they sent the wrong one. They sent the grey one when I asked for a black one. It's a slightly different model as well. Wasn't worried about that too much, but I thought about it. They offered me a discount and said, do you want to keep it? We'll give you a discount. I went, no, I want a black one. <laughs> so apparently that will be here next week. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So I've already started an unboxing, but of the wrong product. Watch out for that video as well. Let's quickly go through this. So device description, device locations in Hong Kong apparently. <laughs> Might have to change that. <laughs> Not going to show you everything on here because, you know, I don't want you hacking me or someone hacking me, but there's a lot of features there. And it does look pretty good and very entertaining. So with that in mind, let me know if you found this video informative, especially the part where, you know, it wouldn't work and I couldn't get connection because it was really annoying me. And also the next part or part two of this video will be me making my own network cables for my switch and for my patch panel. So I'll be making little uh, connections for it. Yeah, or little cables, hopefully. And also I have ordered some that are already made just so you can see what the difference is, whether you want to use ones that are already made or ones that you want to make yourself. And you can do different colours as well. It don't have to be, you know, black. It could be red, green, yellow, blue, whatever colour you want. The same as the ones that are already made. It just might cost you a little bit more money. Right, so the patch cables that I pre-ordered, the ones that are already made, turned up. So I thought I'd plug them in and show you what they look like. Now, as you can see, I haven't filled up all the slots, and the reason for that is I need longer ones. So these are fine for the bits in the middle and some of the sides, but for the further side, they don't fit. They're not long enough, so you just have to buy different sizes. This is a 0 0.5 foot long one, apparently. Yeah? So something to bear in mind. That's why you might want to make your own. Like I said, I am making a video showing you, or going to show you a couple of different options. One being, you know, you just, you just go out and buy them. Another one being, you make your own. And I'm going to be using two different ways of doing that as well. So keep an eye out for that video. So with that, I hope you found this li a little video informative and helpful. And if you've got any more questions, or if you've got any questions, let us know in the comments and I'll try and answer them, as I always do. So uh, with that, if you like this video, I know it's a bit short or maybe not too short. I don't know because I haven't done the video editing. I don't think it's going to be that long, but hopefully you found the video 
informative and helpful in any particular way. And let me know in the comments whether I missed something or I should go into a bit more detail on something. Don't get too technical though because you'll just go straight over my head. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching.